I do house renovations as a business. I have a contract even when I work for family and friends at a discount. My nephews are getting bigger and they want separate rooms. My brother asked me to help finish his basement, make a couple of rooms down there, add a washroom, add a kitchenette and wire up a family room. I priced it out and said I would charge him $32,000, including materials. This was a sizable discount. For the bathroom alone, I would charge anyone else $15,000. His wasn't even roughed in. He never paid me. He always had excuses. I paid for the material and my guys for the work. We did it when I had downtime so I didn't lose out on other money, but it still sucked to get shafted. So I put a construction lien on the house. He didn't care and I wouldn't make him homeless. That was two years ago. Now he has a new job and has to move. To get a new house, he has to sell his current house, which he can't do because there's a lien against the property. He called me to get me to remove it. He promised he'd pay me as soon as it sold. I told him, screw you, pay me. My parents called me to tell me that they would pay what he owed. I said I would agree so long as he paid them back. If he didn't, then any money he didn't pay back had to come out of any inheritance we were getting, God forbid, and that interest started accruing from the day of the loan. They agreed that that was fair. My brother called me to scream at me for involving my parents in our inheritance. I reminded him that he was the one who involved them, not me. He finally took money out of a credit line and paid me interest. I'm a reasonable man. The house sold over asking and the finished basement suite greatly impacted what he got. He's still angry at me for doing it, but I did everything legally and by the books. I might be the idiot for putting a lien on the house, which forced him to take a loan so he could pay me, and his wife hates me for it. My parents aren't happy. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your brother seems to be trying to get it for free and never would have paid you unless you forced the issue. You were smart to put a lien in place. I don't know why all these people are mad at you. It's business, and it's none of their business. Opie's brother still got the work at a discount and deferred payments, and it boosted his house price in a difficult market. And there were no lasting legal consequences, which doesn't always happen when you stiff someone to the tune of $32,000. From any outside perspective, he got an incredible deal, all at the minor and avoidable cost of his pride and some last-minute hassle. No good deed goes unpunished. Do whatever you have to do, and don't feel bad about it. Bro didn't take his parents' money because he knew he had no intention of paying OP. The only reason that I can see for him getting upset about making rules about having to pay it back out of his portion of the inheritance is because it would have stayed an outstanding debt forever. He had no intention whatsoever to pay you from the sale money. You did what was fair, and he's upset that he couldn't cheat on you. He's just mad he couldn't get away with taking advantage of you because you're family. Good on you for knowing how to handle it legally, though. $32,000 is a lot of money, family or not. I, 26 female, have an older sister, Veda, 28. Veda was always our parents' favorite kid. They focused more on her when we were growing up, and she really couldn't do anything wrong. They weren't terrible to me when I was a lot younger, but I was overlooked a lot. Vader also kind of overlooked me. If she was free and had nobody else, she'd play with me, but most of the time she focused on other people and things. Vader had this best friend, Eliza, 28 female, and they were inseparable for the most part throughout their childhoods. Eliza was a constant at our house and was often brought along with our family on family days because she was seen as part of our family. But Eliza was horrible to me. She bullied me badly. On four separate occasions, my parents were called to the school because the bullying had escalated. One time, Eliza attempted to humiliate me in front of a changing room full of kids by grabbing my pads and screaming about me being gross and bleeding in front of everyone. I was 12 at the time. She was 14 and was days away from middle school and high school. Another time, she stole a diary, which I kept and showed off to some kids at the high school. So it went around two schools pretty quickly and it was another call to my parents. My parents and sister still loved Eliza, though, and a lot of it was explained as Eliza having a crappy life. So when I was 13 and she was 15, my parents formally adopted her because Eliza's parents were willing to let my parents. It stung badly and it made home miserable. I moved out as fast as I could and never acknowledged Eliza as my sister. My parents and Vader never liked that. They told me I should embrace Eliza and work to move past it without Eliza needing to apologize. I've been low contact with them for years, but they heard through some people that I was engaged and they were upset I hadn't told them. They told me a wedding invite would have caught them by complete surprise, to which I replied they weren't going to be invited. Needless to say, they don't like that. I told them even if I was willing to invite them for appearances sake, I knew they'd bring Eliza and that's not happening. They told me Eliza is my sister too and part of the family and all four should be invited. 
They told me if I didn't invite my family, I would be publicly making a fuss and humiliating them out of spite, and it would be wrong. Am I the idiot if I don't invite them? Not the idiot. By condoning Eliza's bullying, your parents bullied you in turn. Having a bad family background does not excuse Eliza for being cruel. They don't deserve an invitation. Warn people who know about your wedding that disclosing details and information about date, location, etc. to your parents is not welcome and could lead to being uninvited. Try to have the budget for a bouncer and security because I don't rule out the possibility that they show up uninvited. Don't stand down and don't accept a fake apology now because it would be 100% to save face and get an invite and not because they feel an apology is necessary. They had years to be sorry and seek forgiveness, but they never did. They still aren't. They just want appearances to be kept because they know how bad they will look. Let them look bad and help shine the light. Maybe it's time for no contact. They bring nothing good to your life. Long story short, my mother has been battling dementia for around 12 years, and around 4 years ago she needed more care than what myself and my siblings could reasonably provide. My parents were not exactly wealthy, but they worked hard their entire lives and they always had the goal of leaving a legacy behind. My siblings wanted to split the placement cost. At the time, I was not in the place to help fund her care without great sacrifice, so I told my siblings to take my portion of the estate to cover the cost, which includes the money my parents earmarked for each grandchild. I knew it wouldn't be enough, but it was the least I could do. I didn't tell my wife because I ran the plan for my siblings by her. She also agreed we couldn't afford to take on the amount they wanted, which was around 3000 a month. My mother passed away in February of last year. It took this long to settle her estate, and my wife was upset when we didn't get a portion of the estate. I told her I told my siblings to use my portion to cover my side of the expenses. She was livid. I did my best to explain that she agreed we could not afford to pay 3000 a month and we lived too far away to provide personal assistance, so I came up with a compromise. She felt it was not my place since that money was also intended for our kid. I told her I saw where she was coming from, but I wasn't going to take money away from my parents or siblings if I wasn't helping in some shape or form. Was I the idiot here? Not the idiot. Until your mother died, it was her money, even if it was earmarked for your inheritance. She needed care. Her money should have gone towards it. The only thing you did wrong was not telling your wife since she was expecting this money to come in. But at the same time, she's kind of out of line feeling that she and your kid should have had it above your mother. That's why he didn't tell her, because she would have fought him on this, and so he figured it was better to ask for forgiveness than permission. You are the idiot for not informing her, as you already know. You made a life-changing decision and didn't think it would be prudent to inform your wife. You guys could have done a lot to secure the education of your child in those four years. It wasn't the wife's inheritance. Why does the wife feel it's fair for the OP siblings to shell out, but they pay nothing? Your inheritance is not your wife's. That's literally none of her business. Would I have told my spouse if I were in OP's position? Yes, because I'm honest. But she had no right to be angry when she was counting chickens that hadn't hatched. And if my husband didn't inherit for the same reason, I'd have said, good to know. It just sounds like she was planning on helping spend that inheritance. I, 28 male, have been in a relationship with my now fiancé, 27 female, for the last five years and am now engaged for a couple of weeks. She's my stepsister as well. Our parents want us to break it off and break up because they think it's weird. The problem with this is I've known my fiancé for more than eight years now and the only reason why we're step-siblings is because her father and my mother started to date three years back after we introduced them to each other and got married last year. Her mother and her father were single when we introduced them to each other at her 23rd birthday party. We never thought a relationship would happen between them because they're worlds apart. Introducing the parents is just one of those things that comes with being in a relationship, was our thought. Neither my father nor her mother is alive. We found out about them dating seven months into their relationship, and yes, it was weird as heck, but we decided to stay out of it because their relationship had nothing to do with us and they seemed happy. Everything was sort of going okay, but we did keep our distance from them as the situation was still weird for us. They also left us alone, but that all stopped after their wedding. Everything started with weird comments from them here and there, and my mother all of a sudden started talking to me about this pretty girl she works with, or the new girl at the grocery store, wanting to introduce me. Her father basically did the same, but in a more subtle way, talking about not getting married young, traveling, enjoying life, all that crap. We found this strange and multiple times we asked them to stop. Everything escalated after I proposed and they were angry to say the least when we told them. 
They got visibly angry, yelling at us and asking what will people think? Are we trying to make them look bad? We're siblings. The joke of us dating has gone on long enough and it's time we break up because we're no longer allowed to date each other because we became a family after they married. They demanded that we call off the engagement and break up because they were tired of how awkward we made them feel and having to hear people talking behind their backs. We are disgusting. My fiancé was actually in tears at this point. I told them to go and screw themselves as we did nothing wrong and if anyone was disgusting, it was them because who goes out and marries their child's partner's parent? If they want to see disgust, they should look into a mirror. Things almost got physical between my fiancé's father and me, but my fiancé came between us and just asked if we could leave. I was angry. I don't think I've ever been that angry. Our phones have been going crazy with all the calls and texts telling us they refuse to support us and will cut us off if we decide to continue dating, and a bunch of other things I don't think are allowed on here. My fiancé and I are on the same page. We will not be breaking up or calling off anything, and if that means we do some cutting off, we're happy to do so. I know it looks bad from the outside as we are technically step-siblings, and I don't want to sound like a nine-year-old, but we dated first. What if we were already married? Will they then demand that we divorce? Am I the idiot for marrying my stepsister? Not the idiot. You were dating first. Your parents can kick rocks. If they're embarrassed, they can move towns and change their names. Who knows if their relationship will even survive? These grown adults are out of their ever-loving minds. If they have a problem with it, you should give them some cards for divorce lawyers. They caused the problem, so let them fix it. I take any precautions on disclosing wedding details with anyone, just for people to try on ruining it just because. I'd even consider eloping with just very close people who are really okay with your relationship and you are 1000% sure they won't blab. Let everyone else judge and be disgusted by your parents and live your best life away from the drama with your fiancé. Oh, I would start referring to each other as my brother lover and sister lover around the parents. If they're around, introduce yourselves to their friends as such. Get people to ask why parents are allowing this to go on. Make them have to explain it. They're the ones making this weird. They could have easily made this a huge family joke. You and your fiancé fell in love and it's obvious where you get your great taste in partners from. Have fun with it. But they decided they only get the relationship and you two should end yours. Stupid as heck. You two go on, get married and make babies that are their own cousins. Embrace the joke and invite the rest of the family to join the laughter. I, 36 female, have a sister, 34, who is calling me selfish and rude for not allowing her to have her baby sprinkle at my home. For some background, my sister and I have a love-hate relationship. She's my mother's golden child. I do not get along with my mother, but that's for a whole other post. My sister always had things handed to her, and due to that, she's become entitled. Now to the point of this story. My husband and I have opened our home for parties and gatherings for friends and family. Events such as our kids' birthday parties, hosting a surprise engagement for two of our friends, and allowing my sister to use it as a hall for her gender reveal last month. The issue is that after the reveal, I realized that her guests broke my vegetable garden box by sitting on it, allowed their kids to mess up my garden, and left a mess in my house. My husband and I decided that was the last time. Jump to today. My sister wants to have her sprinkle at my home once she discovered I wasn't paying for her to have it anywhere due to funds, which kind of made me angry. So in her mind, I won't pay for her and her guests to eat and be merry somewhere so she can use my house to have it, knowing the kind of host I am. When I told her no, my house was not an option, she started being nasty, telling me that I was punishing her for other actions and that she's my sister and it's not right. She went as far as trying to guilt me by saying that I don't care about her and the baby and for me to have a good life. I'm stressing her out. And she regrets asking me so she doesn't ask for help. She doesn't want to understand my feelings and reasons. So am I wrong for not wanting a bunch of people here again that disrespected my home before? Not the idiot. Shine up your spying, girl. You've been trained your whole life that golden girl is to get what she asks for. It is your home. Yours, not your sister's party hall. And she says you have to because you won't pay for a venue? Heck no. Your home, your rules. If she didn't jump to help take care of the damages then, she is no longer entitled to even ask to use your home. And the guilting just shows that she knows how to push your buttons to get her own way. Oh, and what the heck is she doing? Demanding you pay for a venue or let her use your home when she already got you to up for the reveal? What the heck is a baby sprinkle? A christening? 
Sounds like the golden girl is using a baby to milk you and everybody else for everything they can get. A baby sprinkle is a gift grab, smaller than a baby shower. Plus, the sister is double entitled because she has already had a gender reveal which some people provide gifts at occasionally. OP, tell her that family isn't even supposed to host showers. One of her friends should host it for her, or she can rent out a place. She sounds like a pain. I doubt that the sister has any friends. Stand your ground and maybe you need to lower contact with her because it sounds like she's only interested in what you can do and pay for her. At this point, why do you even care? She doesn't care about your feelings or the damage to your house. Let her ease on down the entitled road she lives on. It's her loss.